Hey, this is Mr. Mason Ed, and what we're going to do in this tutorial today is we are going to dilate an object on the coordinate plane when the center of dilation is not the origin. All right, and this will work for any random point. So it's asking us to dilate triangle ABC, which is right here on the coordinate plane using positive 10, negative 10 as a center of dilation. So the first thing that we should do is locate the center of dilation on the coordinate plane. So we're going to go to positive 10, negative 10, and we're going to make a point right here. All right. Now, something that we should understand about dilations is this. Now, wherever your center of dilation is in relation to the object you are dilating, if you start at that point and you move towards the object, that is the direction in which the object is going to expand or get larger. So if we generally go in this direction, the shape is going to expand. Now, if our object is going towards our point, then our object is contracting or getting smaller. So the strategy that I'm going to use to dilate this triangle is by using slope. Now, slope is the relationship of the change in y values compared to the change in x values between two given points. It's a measure of how steep a line is. So let me just show you how this works. We're going to start with this point here, and I'm going to see how it relates to point B of my triangle. And the first thing you want to do is you want to move upwards. That's called a rise. So if we start here and go upwards, we're going to stop when we are directly across from point B. And then what we're going to do is we are going to move from that point to the left. So from this point, we went up a distance of 7. So we're going to say that we went up 7. And then from here, we went to the left 2. And because we were going in a negative direction in the x direction, I'm going to write minus 2. So we would say that the rise between these two points is positive 7, and the run is negative 2. All right, now that we know that the rise over the run of our center dilation to point B is 7 over 2, what we do next is we do the same thing again from point B. We're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we're going to go over 2. Now, the scale factor that we're looking for is a scale factor of 3. The initial rise over run is considered a scale factor of 1. The second rise over run is considered a scale factor of 2. And we go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then over 2. And that is our third time. So this point or this location would be a scale factor of 3. So we're going to go ahead and put a point at that location. And we're going to label it B with a little mark after it because that's a symbol to show that we have transformed or moved a point. Okay, what we're going to do next is we are going to figure out what the slope is between our center dilation and point C. And remember, you always have to start with the rise. So starting at this point, once again, we have to rise 2, and then we have to make a run of 2. And of course, 2 over 2 is equal to 1. Now technically, this is positive 2 to the left 2, so it's negative 2. So positive 2 over negative 2 would be equal to negative 1. But for our purposes, here is what we are going to do. So this initial movement, remember, represents a scale factor of 1. So we're going to go up 2 and to the left 2 again, and that is a scale factor of 2. And we're going to go up 2 and to the left 2 again, and this represents a scale factor of 3. So right here is the location of our new point C. All right, now we have to find the slope between our center dilation and point A. So we have to go up a distance of 3. And then we have to go to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's a scale factor of 1. So once again, we have to go up 3. 
and now we have to go to the left five. And once again, we have to go up three, and we have to go to the left a distance of five. And now we plot our new point, which is point A. All right, now that we have all of our new points, all we have to do is connect them and we have our dilated triangle. So let's start by going from point A to point B, and then from point B to point C, and from point C back to point A. And that is our dilated triangle. All right, so we just dilated a triangle by using slope. Now, let's say your teacher requires that you use an equation in order to do the math. Well, what we're going to do now is we are going to go over the equation that will determine where the new points will be located. So to use our equation, first of all, we have to understand what a few of the variables are that we're going to use. Let's start with k. k is going to be equal to whatever the given scale factor is that we have to dilate by. We also have to know that a and b in parentheses, normally it's x and y, but in this case, a and b is going to be equal to our center of dilation, okay? And then, our x and y coordinates are going to be the location of our original point. So the equation that we're going to use to find the location of our new points is going to be a plus k multiplied by the difference of x and a. Now, all of this right here is going to find us the new location of our x-coordinate. And then we're going to basically do the same thing for our new y-coordinate. But this time, the equation for that is going to be b plus k multiplied by y minus b. All right, now that we have our formula to find the new location of our x value of the new coordinate and our y value of the new coordinate, all we have to do is identify the value of our a's, our k's, our x's, our b's, and our y's. And all of that information is given. So let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead first and identify what the value of A is. Now remember, A and B represent the location of our center of dilation. So it's really our X and our Y value of that point, but we have to differentiate that from all of the other points. So it has its own special designation of A and B. So we're going to go over here, and we can see that the X value would be positive 10, but we're going to call that our A value and the B or secondary value is negative 10. So for all A's in the equation, we're gonna use positive 10, and for all B's in the equation, we're gonna use negative 10. So for this A here, we're gonna substitute that with positive 10, and we have to add that to the product of K in this difference, and K, remember, is our scale factor, which is given in the problem, that's three, now by x value, they just mean the original x value of one of the points in the original shape. So we actually have to pick one of our three points first. Let's just go ahead with point C. Now the location of point C is positive eight and negative eight. And right now we just want the x value, which is positive eight. And we have to subtract from that the value of a, which we already know, is positive 10. All right. Now, everything in these brackets here 
will give us the new location of point C, or should I say just the X value of that new location. So everything in here is going to give us the new location of the Y value of point C. So let's go ahead and start substituting our values here. So the B value is going to be negative 10. Remember, the B really is just the Y value of your center of dilation. So we're going to put negative 10 in for B plus K, which is still a scale factor of 3. And next, we have to put in the Y value of our original location, which is negative 8. We have to subtract from that the B value of our center of dilation, which is negative 10. All right, all we have to do now is solve everything in these brackets and solve everything in these brackets. And that will give us the new XY location of point C. All right, so let's go ahead and start with what's in parentheses here. So 8 minus 10 is negative 2. And then we're going to drop down this 3 and the plus and the 10. Now we have to apply the order of operations. So we have to multiply 3 and negative 2, which is negative 6. So we have to add negative 6 to positive 10. And that gives us a sum of positive 4. All right, now up here we have negative 8 minus negative 10. Remember, when you are subtracting a negative, you have to turn both of these positive. So now we have a sum of positive 2. And we're going to have to multiply that by our scale factor of 3. And we're going to have to add to that negative 10. So now we have negative 10 plus 6. And negative 10 plus 6 is equal to negative 4. Now, this is going to be our new x value, and this is going to be our new y value. So we would say that the transformed point is going to be positive 4, negative 4. And if you take a look at what we did prior, if we go to positive 4, negative 4, you can in fact see that point C is located precisely in that location. Now, it might not seem like it, but everything that we did here is actually what we did the first time. This is just the equation that represents kind of what we did. Now, if we take a look at this part of our equation, notice that we had 8 minus 10, which gave us negative 2. Because we're dealing with x values here, this is just saying that we went over 2 in the x direction. So if you take a look at the center of dilation, notice that we did go to the left 2. And then if you take a look at this part of our equation here, we ended up getting positive 2, which meant we went up 2. So this portion of our equation really just is the slope. This really is the rise and this is the run, but with ordered pairs, we deal with x's and then y's, but with slope, we deal with y's and then x's. But these two values right here represent the slope. And then notice what we did after that. The slope was then multiplied by our scale factor. So that gave us a product of negative 6 in the x direction, and it gave us a product of positive 6 in the y direction. And we had to add that increase starting with our center of dilation. And here's what I mean by that. So if we go back to the center of dilation and we go up 6 in the y direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we go to the left 6 in the x direction, notice we land directly on our new point C. All right, so that was just a couple of ways that you could dilate an object on the coordinate plane, starting out by just using a visual method or using slope, and the second way by using an equation that actually represents the slope method of dilation.